Hi, welcome back. Shout out to the YouTube and the Spotify audience. Have you ever gone online and you're looking for things to inspire you for your project or just your life in general or whatever's going on? And by the end of the scrolling for inspiration, you feel more discouraged than when you even started. I feel like I touched on this on an earlier episode, but I wanted to dive a little bit deeper into that. I think that there's a key difference between inspiration and comparison. Inspiration obviously makes you feel inspired. Comparison can oftentimes lead you to feel like you have so much that you're lacking in or you're not measuring up. I think there is a degree of healthy comparison, which we'll talk about in a moment. But for the sake of the video, let's talk about unhealthy comparison for a bit. I know for myself, there's so many times where I am looking at other people who are creators that I look up to and I think their stuff is super awesome. And as I'm looking at what they're doing, I'm like, oh my gosh, like my skill set does not match this whatsoever. What am I even doing? Why am I even trying? If the bar is this high, I don't know if I'll ever be able to achieve it. Etc. I'm sure that we've all had conversations in our fields or our hobbies to the same degree in our mind. And the thing that I had to begin to recognize for myself was it's okay to be inspired by other people that are in a different place than me. What I needed to ask was a different question. The different question that I needed to ask was, how are they doing this? And I think that By asking how that led me down the path of inspiration versus down the path of just comparison where I don't end up doing anything. So as I began to reevaluate the videos that were inspiring to me by creators that are super awesome, I'm watching it not only for the inspiration, but the how-to behind it. Okay, this is a really cool transition. I wonder how how they did that. Oh, this is a really cool shot. I wonder if I could shoot that. And so then I would take that and I would go and try to do that myself. And I would utilize that inspiration and see if I can execute the same things. And oftentimes I would find that I could do that once I got past that mental block of feeling inadequate. And so from there, I would evaluate, okay, cool. This is a really good shot. And I don't want to be a carbon copy of this other person. So like, what can I do that would be a little bit different, add my own spin to it. And then I began to do that. I think that if we start to look at things that inspire us and figure out the how behind it, then we can take that inspiration and turn it into output for ourselves. And I think that that is what a healthy comparison looks like. And I think that there's nothing wrong with healthy comparison as long as I'm you know, using it to further myself and I'm not just using it to diminish myself consistently. But then there's another aspect that we've heard spoken on so many times. Everyone's like, you know, social media is just the best of every person and you can't compare yourself to someone else's highlight reel. And these things are true 100% of the time. I just am tired of hearing them, (laughs) but we keep hearing them because we're not listening. If we're being honest. I think that the big disconnect there is we're we're comparing our inside feelings to someone's outside representation. We have no idea what the person on the other end of that post is going through, feels like, any of these things. But we are judging ourselves harshly based on the presentation of someone's outside. And we're like, I'm not measuring up. I don't seem as happy as this person. I'm not having this amount of creative output. My creativity isn't the same as this. And it just becomes this downward spiral. What we need to recognize is that the people that are putting things out there or just the people in general that we're comparing ourselves to, they have stuff going on. Everyone is insecure in some way. There's no one who is absolutely not insecure. Everyone has insecurities. And to not recognize this is a human and they have human feelings 
and begin to compare ourselves to what I would liken to a product or branding at this point when it comes to social media. Most people are brands, you know, their profiles are very aesthetic and whatnot. And what they're putting out is very aesthetic. To compare ourselves to a, a brand is, is just not fair. We don't know what those people have had to fight for to be able to post what they're posting or to have the creative output that they have or whatever it may be. We don't know the backstory. We only know our truth and our story. And we're judging our truth and our story against an incomplete idea. And I think that that, that's where it becomes unhealthy. When I begin to envy other people, that's where I'm missing it completely. If only I had this, if only I had that, if only, if only, if only, if only. What's in my hands right now? What do I have? What are the strengths that I carry? I think that that is one of the most powerful questions that you can ask in this scenario is what do I have in my hands? What are my strengths? Oftentimes we want to point out all the different things that we lack and the disadvantages that we have, but we're slow to recognize what we do have. Every single one of us has strengths. What are your strengths? I would encourage you to sit down with yourself and write down what, what strengths you do have. What advantages do you have? And lean into those. From there, you can go and see what the weaknesses are and begin to develop those things. But if all I'm doing is pointing out my weaknesses, it feels like a defeated battle. It feels like it's a non-starter. There's no point in launching because it's just weaknesses. But recognizing that we have something that we're bringing to the table in general. Right now, I'm being more specific about creativity, but I think that this is just in life in general. This applies to that too. You have strengths. Begin to recognize those. Like I said, I encourage you, write them down. Remind yourself of your strengths. If you're not sure, ask your friends, hey, what, what do you feel like I'm good at? What do, you, what do you feel like are things that I do well? And take those to heart and lean into those things. When it comes to recognizing your strengths, another key tool to vanquish comparison is gratitude. It's really hard to feel like everything sucks when you're positioning yourself from the place of gratitude. It feels like it's kind of not possible. Like I said, what are the things that you have in your hand? What are the strengths that you have? From that, show gratitude. Okay, I'm grateful that I you know, know how to do this and I can do this and I'm gonna lean into that. Rather than pointing out everything that you're not, at the end of the day, it doesn't matter if you put anything out. <laughs> it really doesn't. You could be putting out, it doesn't matter if you put out the most creative, incredible piece of art that you've ever been able to imagine. If you feel like crap inside. My heart and what I want to express is the importance of you the importance of the person behind the output and i think that as we shift into more of a gratitude mindset and we become more mindful and more in touch with ourselves then that creative output can only become greater i feel like it's really easy to see a piece of art and recognize this person is disconnected from themselves or this person seems really connected to themselves. Typically, those people who are connected to themselves, they put themselves into their art. Whereas in my experience and what I've seen, people who are not as connected to themselves, their art is disassociating from their reality and expressing a reality in which they would like to be a part of. And it can make for good art but what is the priority? Is the priority to have good art or a bunch of people that are healthy, happy, and fulfilled? It's not about what you do. 
It's about who you are. I think something also that is important when it comes to comparison, a healthy way of comparing yourself is to put yourself up against, so to speak, a past self. Comparing myself to who I was five years ago, there has been so much growth. There has been so much pain. There has been so much of all the things in between. But if I look at who I am today and who I was then and I compare those things, I can see that growth. I can see purpose behind a lot of the pain. And I think that we oftentimes want to compare to other people not having the full story. But when we do have the full story and we can pull so much great gold out of it, we neglect to do so. You're not who you were five years ago. If you're active in your self-growth, there's no way you look back at who you were five years ago and say, oh, nothing's changed. In that too, I feel like for myself, in the last five years... I unlearned how to have fun as much. And that's not something that I want to carry with me into the next five years. So in comparing who I am now to who I was five years ago, I feel like five years ago, it was so much easier for me just to have fun. And so I'm like, okay, cool. I recognize this. What happened in that time? Oh, this happened that happened. This is where I learned that. This is the defense mechanism that I began to use that pushed that side of me down. And now I can take that and I can actively work towards bringing more fun into my life. It works both ways. It works as a point of recognizing there's been so much growth and recognizing when there's been a departure from your intent. That's why I think it's really important to understand who you are and to check in with yourself pretty consistently. It's so easy just to live on autopilot, go to work, make dinner, go to bed, go to work, wait for your day off, do nothing on your day off, order Uber Eats, go to sleep. Like it's so easy to get stuck in a routine and you're like, oh my gosh, where's the last five years gone? For those of you who have been listening, I feel like we are people who want to take charge of our lives. We're people who want more than just the mundane, more than just the ordinary. We want to be the best version of ourselves in a healthy way. It's not an overnight thing in a healthy way where I can track my progress, where I can set goals and then I can attain them. So we have pointed out the difference between inspiration and comparison. We pointed out the differences between healthy comparison and non-healthy comparison. So when it comes to non-healthy comparison, this is something that you have to be pretty vigilant towards, I would say, at least in my experience. Maybe I'm the only one, but I know I'm not the only one. Understand what your triggers are. Understand that, okay, if I, if I go on this page and I head down this rabbit hole, I know that it's just going to be this black hole where by the end of it, I'm not going to want to even start or finish the project that I've been working on. Recognize what those triggers are and don't pull them. Recognize what are things that really propel you forward and pull the trigger on that. Sift those things out. Maybe in a year's time or three months time, the things that triggered you before aren't going to trigger you like they are now, but for right now, they're not benefiting you in any way, shape, or form. So why would you continue down that path? I'm speaking from experience. There's things where I'll look at it and I'm like, okay, cool. This person is so awesome and their creativity is so great and I am just the worst at everything that I do. (laughs) And then I'll just keep watching it and watching it and watching it and then like, oh, there's no point to make a video today. I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna go for a walk or something. It's not pushing me in the correct direction. It's pushing me down. And I just think that if we know that there's things that push us down, then why, why would we pursue those things? So I just want to encourage you to be mindful before, you know, seeking inspiration or before going online, what are my emotions? I feel pretty neutral right now. Okay, cool. After about 10 minutes, check in. What are my emotions? 
I'm feeling a little bit bummed or I'm feeling really happy and inspired. Cool. And then begin to lean into that instead of just mindlessly scrolling through things or mindlessly watching things or just mindlessly doing things, just checking in with ourselves and being in touch with how we're feeling going into something, how we're feeling in the middle of it, how we're feeling after. I think that that's important to help us to recognize what triggers us and what inspires us. And by doing that, we're learning so much more about ourselves and that's going to inform everything that we do. It's really, really easy to slip into comparison. It is. I think it's easier than we would all like to admit. Gratitude is a weapon that really helps to kick comparison in the teeth. Another great tool is learning how to celebrate other people and celebrate their accomplishments. Even if they're in the same field or even if they're accomplishing something that you want to accomplish, whether spoken or secretly. If we aren't able to celebrate others, then we're unable to celebrate ourselves. So the key to opening that door is to celebrate other people. When you see them accomplishing something, recognize that. Oftentimes I'll find that when I'm celebrating someone else, I find the breakthrough that I'm looking for myself. Learn to celebrate other people. My encouragement, my challenge to you this week is to find somebody and just reach out to them and celebrate an accomplishment of theirs. It becomes a kind of contagious thing. And when it becomes more normal for you, you're cultivating this culture of encouragement. And as the tide raises, so do all the boats with it. So now when you're accomplishing things, you've established this culture around you of encouragement and these other people are going to encourage you as well. That is going to help feed into your motivation as well, creating this culture of positivity rather than when someone has an accomplishment going behind their back and being like, oh, did you see what they did? I would have done it this way. This could have been better. These are all the different things that I would have done if it was me. When that's coming from a place that's rooted in envy, check your motives. We need to check our motives sometimes. Sometimes I find it gnarly that I'll say something without my brain filtering it. And I'll be like, whoa, that was really venomous. Is that really how I feel? And sometimes... I have to be honest. I'm like, oh, that is how I feel about this. And then I have to slow down and be like, why do I feel this way? Why has this been unchecked for so long? And it's because of my lack of stopping, seeing what I'm feeling, going through that whole process. So I think it's important to recognize like our words are oftentimes giving us information for what's what we're feeling inside. When we're like, oh my gosh, that was a slip of the tongue. Oh my gosh, I didn't mean to say that. I think subconsciously, we probably did. (laughs) And that's okay. When something rises up, that's a good sign. That means that it's boiling up to the surface so that it can be dealt with. So that we can use it as an opportunity to grow. So that we can become better so that we can approach the situation different next time. There is good and bad comparison. We can't just blanket statement the term. But my question when it comes to comparison is, what fruit is it yielding? Is it negative fruit or positive fruit? And then based on based on that observation, I know how I need to move. With all that being said, I want to encourage you to stay in touch with yourself, recognize the things that are triggering you and pulling you into comparison, find things that inspire you, learn how to celebrate other people, learn how to celebrate yourself, recognize the strengths that you have, recognize the things you have in your hands and come from the place of gratitude. That is what is going to help you to be sustainable, not only in life, but in creativity. Because it is so easy in creativity to allow comparison to kill your creative juices. And nobody wants that. So if you did make it to the end of the video, 
I want to thank you so much. All the gold stars are yours. If you have not subscribed, you should probably do so. I'm actually told to tell you to do so. I would love to hear from you in the comments. What are some ways that you've learned to celebrate yourself? What are some ways that you've learned to celebrate other people? And until next time.